Well, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you today. This is gonna be a, a very brief update. I know we just did one uh, roughly two weeks ago, in fact. And there's not been a tremendous amount of change to cover in that period of time. But I do wanna recognize once again, all the great faculty and staff we have at the university. It was a pleasure to be able to attend the virtual award ceremony and see the recognition that took place for the outstanding achievements of the people who were part of the team here at Neomed. It's really one of the most important things that we can do. So big thank you for everyone who put that on. And once again, congratulations to all the award winners, both our faculty and our staff, uh, because you make the difference here. You make us really who we are. We do have the Asclepius Ball coming up. Uh, this coming week, this coming, sorry, what one, the 26th, a week from Saturday. Uh, and so that's the big fundraiser our students put on to be able to create scholarships. So this is really great that they do it. And they're um, asking for anybody who's interested in promoting a star. I think it's $250. I, I did buy a star. I unfortunately will not be in town to attend that, but I encourage all of you to attend if you're able to do so. This is a very busy week as uh, College of Medicine is going through the match process. And what we used to call the scramble is now called SOAP. Uh, for those students who may not have initially matched going through uh, the initial match process. Uh, on Friday, they're all gonna find out where they're going. For the College of Medicine, this is probably the most exciting day for the students. I think the two most memorable days are the day you got that letter that says you're in medical school. And the second one is, not commencement, that's really more for the families. It's where you're gonna spend the next three to seven years of your life uh, to really specialize. Uh, we'll be having a College of Pharmacy match day later in the year. They always do well too. I'm expecting great results from the match day for the medical students this year. Um, we'll know on Friday what the overall match rate is, but uh, we always do very, very well. So I'm excited for the team. We have a board meeting coming up tomorrow. Tonight's gonna to be the finance meeting. Once again, these board meetings are public. We advertise them two weeks in advance as required by state law. So they aren't secret. We do go into executive session for things that um, may involve personnel issues that are confidential or legal issues um, because those, those are protected under confidentiality. But anything that the board votes on these are all public actions. And I know there's been a perception in some that these, the board meetings are secret and what takes place at them isn't always available, but all of you are in fact able and invited to attend if you choose to do so. Um, I hope that doesn't mean we're gonna get a mass group right away because we're in a relatively small room. And if we start to get a lot more attendance, then we'll have to move it to a bigger venue. But we have great board members. They are here to look out for you. They're here to look out for our students. And really they're the oversight that makes sure we're following a good strategy, that we're fiscally responsible. And they have ultimate fiduciary responsibility to the governor's office for the operations of this university. So they do take on a really big role for us. And we go over, over everything with them from personnel actions uh, so they approve all the hires that we do. They are the ones who decide what our budget is. We create a budget and propose it to them. And if they agree, that's what we come back and implement. They may ask us to modify it. Uh, they're the ones who control what happens with tuition. Uh, they're the ones who will control all of the major financial aspects of this university. Uh, it's my job to, to put it together with our team and make sure what we're doing is appropriate and going to grow this university, but they're there as that check and balance. Uh, I report to them. Uh, and so ultimately, they're the ones who control the strategy of this university. They're very good meetings. Uh, and we talk about everything from personnel actions to faculty promotions to this coming board meeting. There will be a proposal for honorary degree candidates, as well as a couple of other um, recognitions from the university that the board has the um, oversight for. So it'll be a great meeting. Uh, and these are nine individuals plus two students who ded dedicate a great deal of time and effort to make sure that we're a really outstanding university and that we're appropriately resourced. 
right? They, that's, it's their job to make sure I'm doing my job. So if I come back to them and say, you know what, everybody's really happy that nobody's gonna get a raise this year. They're gonna say, no, John, you can't do that. I would never do that, but they're there to look out for you, right? So we work together as a team and, and I can't thank them enough for all that they do. Today is the kickoff for Giving Day. And so we are here to ask for your help and encourage you to reach out to your networks if you're willing to do so to cheerlead for us to say, this is an opportunity for people to be able to give to the university to support our mission. And I think we have one of the best missions of any university in this state and, and in the country. If you think about what we do, we ran the numbers and it's, it's close to about one in 11 actually, um, US trained MDs in the state of Ohio who are licensed to practice here are Neomed graduates. That's a really big number. We estimate about 40,000 prescriptions are filled every year and counseled by college of, graduate, college of Pharmacy graduates coming out of here. We have a growing College of Graduate Studies to de develop an even greater workforce to serve the community. And we have researchers here who are making a big difference in disease treatment and prevention. And the dollars we bring in are to help with all of those areas creating new programming for students that wouldn't be covered under SSI or under tuition. We want to bring in more dollars to help provide startup funding to our faculty and grants and to build resources for them to do even better and more impactful research. And a key piece of that is done through philanthropy. When studies were done in the US to look at where do the big R01 grants come from that have had huge impact on transforming healthcare? Most of them have been seeded through philanthropic funds. Those startup dollars, whether it's five, 10, 15, $30,000 that allow a researcher to go off in a new direction and explore and discover in different ways. Those are the things that have led to the bigger breakthroughs for more funding from the federal government to make big differences. The dollars that we bring in also through Giving Day help to support the SOAR clinic. It helps to support the efforts of the pharmacy students going out and doing mass vaccinations uh, during the pandemic and the great impact that we've had. I'm proud to tell you that once again, Huntington Bank has stepped up and they're going to do a $35,000 match to your money. And Sarah and I are gonna continue to support the university this year in total, we expect to give um, about 50,000. Um, one of those new pieces is I, I did give a challenge to the university and said, anybody who's interested in joining us at the Sandusky Half Ironman, whether you do it as a team or individual, show us that you've signed up and at least shown up. If you don't finish the race, that's okay. Um, many people don't. And we'll match your dollars towards a uh, up to 10,000 uh, for uh, Parkinson's research here at the university. If we don't get enough people signing up to do that, we'd like to give the whole 10,000 anyway. So we'll also credit you if you wanna go be a volunteer and that doesn't cost you any money. Uh, so I wanna get to that 10,000 because we wanna give that money to the university. And for giving day, we're gonna, so Huntington's doing 35,000. Um, we're going to do a match of another 3,500 for these uh, next 24 hours. For any money you put in, we'll match up to another $3,500 to extend the money that Huntington Bank is doing. So really important for all of us because the money that comes in is for you. The money that comes in is for our students and it's for the service that we do to our community. So with that, I'm going to stop here quickly answer any questions that I can because we're knee deep in budgeting right now and trying to get everything taken care of for our university um, family. And I'm gonna turn it over to Craig Einan after this. So questions? None, that's great. Craig, you are up, sir. All right. Thank you, Dr. Langell. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Craig Einan, Director of Alumni Relations and Development Operations. Thank you. 
Uh, I'm here again, as Dr. Langel said, to talk to you a little bit about Giving Day and the kickoff of the employee campaign as part of our annual Blue Fund campaign. I know many of you have heard me talk about this for the last eight years, so I have good news for you for those that have heard me speak. I've actually brought someone else to talk about the Blue Fund and what it means. Uh, Teresa Whetstone, a second year medical student, is going to talk about what the Blue Fund means and, and the impact it has on students. So, Teresa? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you to President Langell and Craig Einan for inviting me here to speak on Giving Day and about the Blue Fund. So like you said, my name is Teresa Whetstone. I am a second year medical student. I began working with Bonathons uh, quite a long time ago as a caller during my undergraduate year days at Westminster College, um, about 10 years ago. And because I thought it was a way that I could talk to alumni while making money. And Neomed and Westminster have very similar um, ethos and have much in common. Both are small schools with a close-knit circle of loving individuals that support it. So when Mr. Einan asked me to join his team for the Phonathon as the supervisor, I jumped right in. As a second year College of Medicine student, I'm beginning to understand just how intricate the workings of Neomed are. From interprofessional collaboration between the colleges of pharmacy, medicine, and graduate studies, as well as incorporating relevant humanities into our basic science um, courses, as well as providing extra and co-curricular activities and experiences for all students. The, the faculty and staff at Neomed are the backbone of this institution um, with your dedication and uh, your dedication to our shared mission. I recognize how demanding the curriculum can be on both students and staff. We demand excellence of each other and we make each other better every day. More than that though, is the community that Neomed fosters from day one. I have the privilege of working with several first year students here at Neomed and they fill out a survey which includes a question about their favorite thing at Neomed. Every single one of them talked about how much they love the community building here and how much we support each other. So we must invest in that community and that is why I give to the Blue Fund and why I urge the faculty and staff to join me in the family of donors. The Blue Fund dollars help support student initiatives like the student run free clinic as Dr. Uh, Dr. Langell mentioned, but it also, helps um, student and faculty relationships through the OSRP Summer Fellowship Fund. These dollars help keep campus a beautiful place, both inside and out with diversity initiatives and beautification projects. Student and staff needs continue to grow as Neomed adapts to a rapidly changing world, which makes giving day gifts more valuable than ever. Unrestricted gifts to the Blue Fund are important to Neomed's ability to, uh, to match the needs of the people who make Neomed a competitive and wonderful place to be. So on this giving day, I hope you all will lead the way to meeting our fundraising goals. I work with the Phonathon because I understand just how important it is for key stakeholders like the alumni, like the administration, the faculty, staff, and even current students like me to continue reinvesting in our purpose of creating trans uh, transformational leaders in healthcare. We are not an island here on campus. The support of our closest stakeholders shows the outside community just how much we believe in our mission and how committed we are to our home here, which will promote the investment of those outside um, of the surrounding area. So I'm not gonna be a student here forever, I hope. <laughs> and when I get to graduation, I want to be sure that I did everything in my power to protect the future of Neomed. When other students see their mentors and friends among the faculty and staff, like you all, giving to the Blue Fund, my peers will better recognize how important this giving is to advance our communal interests. It is our charge to protect Neomed for the students and staff of the future. Thank you again for inviting me here to speak. I'll now turn it back over to Mr. Einan. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, one of the things I don't think Teresa mentioned in her talk was she's actually also uh, serving in the Air Force as a lieutenant, second lieutenant. So when you see her on campus, it's second lieutenant Whetstone. Uh, 
So, um, but yes, thank you. Um, yes, we do all hope you will give to the, to the Blue Fund this year. There are multiple ways you can, can do it. All of you hopefully received through campus mail a pledge form and letter from Lindsay Loftus asking for your support. You can return those to our office. If you happen to have them on you, like some folks did, I'll take them today before we leave here this morning. Um, you can go online to neomed.edu slash giving day and participate uh, through the giving day website or you can just go to our rather regular giving site, neomed.edu backslash give slash blue fund. Um, and the, sorry, the blue fund, um, I, I tell this story every year to help highlight the importance of the blue fund. And I'm gonna tell it again because we actually have some exciting news. Some of you may recall that we used to send Lindsay Loftus to Texas every year. It wasn't because we didn't want him in the office. It was because we wanted him out there meeting with donors. The first year he came back from Texas, he came back with a $50,000 endowed scholarship in honor of Dr. Littman, who was so touched that he made a $25,000 gift. So that was one trip, $75,000. Blue Fund Gifts helped make that possible because it helped us send him out there. The second year he went out to Texas, he came back with a $5,000 gift, which covered the expenses and was very generous of that donor. The third year he went out there, he came back with a $300,000 uh, um, planned gift, a state gift from a donor. That's where the exciting news comes in. Here recently, that donor visited us on campus, saw all of the growth, um, was excited about his alma mater. And he told us that he was going to increase his commitment through his estate gift. And that, now, that estate gift is now going to be hopefully at least $1 million. So thank you, Lindsay. I bring all of that up because the Blue Fund truly helps make that possible. I think you all understand how the Blue Fund supports student scholarships. That's easy to understand. Academic programs and the SOAR clinic, that's easy to understand. But the Blue Fund allows the foundation to do its important work. It allows Lindsay to get out there and meet with our donors to encourage those larger gifts that are truly transformational, that truly help move forward our strategic plan. So with that, I'd like to invite Lindsay up to talk a little bit and give you some more updates. Uh, so Lindsay. Thank you, Craig. Thanks, Teresa. Um, giving Day is a celebration, so I'd like to see a smile on all of your faces. There we go. It's a, it's a time to celebrate Neomed and the excellence that we have here at the university. And as Craig shared one story, I want to put some things in context for you relative to overall fundraising at the institution. But first, I want to say thank you. I see many of you in the audience that have given this year, that have given last year, and that have given every year that I've known you. So thank you for your gifts to Neomed. We appreciate it. Um, we try to put it to the best use possible. As Craig mentioned, trips to uh, Texas and Florida and Arizona where we have pockets of alumni, and we'd like to do more. Um, one of the things I'd like to share with you is a little bit of context about giving in general. This year, we have a goal of $4.5 million in major gifts. Right now, we're at $3.1 million in cash and commitments, signed, sealed, and delivered. We have another $3.6 million on the horizon. Individuals, organizations that we're speaking to about things specific to the university that they're interested in and that we're interested in. And our annual fund, Part of what Giving Day supports, we have a goal of 500,000. So $5 million this year. Again, 3.1 million in right now. All of last year was 1.7 million. We have a lot of room to go because our president, Dr. Langell, has a goal of $10 million annually. And we all like to set stretch goals. But the way we're gonna get there is by looking at our strategic plan and wrapping everything that we do into those programs that generate more revenue for the institution. Things like global health. We raised just shy of $2 million cash in for that program. That's all attributed to Dr. Langell and the relationships that he had. But that program is in place. Dr. Fossil's hit the ground running. He's a great guy, a pediatrician. He knows how to talk to people. They like him. And when you look at Dr. Fossil, I look at all the other faculty and researchers we hear, have here at the university and that same relationship that they have with the people they work with. 
I can't say thanks enough to Dr. Tawison and the work that he's done with some of our donors. We went on a trip to Florida. He wanted $12,500 to go to Alaska. And he'll tell you this story too. We asked for a million. And at the dinner table, the donor held up the paper and said, I could never do this. We can't do this. And we just kept talking. And by the end of the dinner, we said, hey, can we schedule a time to talk to you in a few weeks? Because the donor said, hey, Dr. Tawison, could you break this down into kind of little manageable pieces? So on the plane ride home, Hans looks at me and says, we're not gonna get anything. And I said, Hans, you're gonna get a quarter of a million dollars. And when we made that phone call to Marcy and, and Derek, the first thing she said on the call was, Hans, we're thrilled to get the proposal. We're gonna do the silver level of $250,000. And he looked at me and his jaw dropped open, right? Yes, sir, I'm right, you know I'm right. <laughs> But that's the way we connect people to the institution. Their passion for the programs that we do. It's our job to tell all of those. We're going to continue to lead with those things in our strategic plan so that we can wrap philanthropy into ways we can generate more revenue for the institution. So with that, I will close. I'll ha happily answer any questions, but just know our goal is 4.5 million for this year, 500,000 for the annual fund. And our stretch goal is to move to $10 million annually with sustainable gifts to the institution based on the programs that we do as part of the strategic plan. Today's giving day, again, if you've given, thank you. If you've given in the past, thank you. Your gifts are important to us. We value your gifts. We value the work that you do here, whether you're faculty, staff, or student. We're one institution. We're very powerful. We do a lot of the things that help keep Ohio and the nation healthy. So thank you.